Another Friday, another problem. And today it's about the drum machine of Bitwig Studio. So Simon said, Hey Polarity, can you do a video on how to use multi-out VSTs like XLN Audio XO with the drum machine rack of Bitwig so that each drum pad can trigger a separate sound in the VST? And I tried to come up with some kind of solution and every time I had a solution there was another problem. So in the end I said, fuck it, I do a video. So here's the video. We want to use here a drum machine a native drum machine device of Bitwig Studio in combination with the VST drum machine. So this has some benefits and I tell you in a minute what kind of benefits. So first we set up here this drum machine and open up here the return channels. And on this return channel, we actually put here a VST, a drum VST, XO in this case. You don't need to use v uh, XO. Um, so then we select here kick drum on the first cell, a snare drum on the third cell, and a hi-hat on the, I think the fifth, yeah, fifth cell. And then we go to the edit page here and we send the kick drum to bus one, the snare to bus two, and the hi-hat to bus three. That's it. You can close it down and we open up here the multi output page and add missing chains. So now we have here the kick drum, the snare and the hi-hat on bus three. So now we use an audio receiver on cell one, C1. This is the kick drum, right? So we use here audio receiver, audio receiver, and we rename this cell to kick. And in here, we select the drum machine, drum machine chains, XO, XO chains, bus one, post, right? So now we receive basically from bus one of XO, the kick drum inside of the cell of the native drum machine of Bitwig Studio. So we can create now here some kind of note clip and we see the name basically of the cell, which is the first benefit. You can name these cells here and see it inside of the note clip. And then you can trigger here the kick drum. And now you can hear basically the kick drum coming from the cell because of the note receiver or of the audio receiver. And you can also hear the audio out of the master of the XO. So what we want to do is to just mute this here. Right. So now you only hear the kick drum coming from this note receiver. And we can duplicate this here to D1 and call this um, snare and here we receive drum machine drum machine chains xo xo chains bus two post so now we have here the snare right we have also the name here okay then next is the hi-hat in here name this hi-hat receive drum machine xo XO chains uh, bus three post. Okay. Okay. Nice. So now you can use processing, EQing, and so on directly on these cells. So it's it works exactly like the native drum machine, except that you use basically the audio engine of XO or all the features of XO. But the drum machine itself, you can work exactly like you used to uh, with the drum machine without the XO. So you have here now the audio on this cell, you can process it, you can maybe put your reverb on the snare Okay. Nice. So, like I said, one benefit is you have the names from these cells inside of the note clip. You can see this. You use the XO itself as an audio engine and all the features like here, this uh, space, um, this sample space. You can exchange everything and everything works, you know, perfect and you can process the audio on the cells itself. So it works like the native drum machine. Um, 
there's one problem left and that is that you can't actually use your display buttons right so if you hit these nothing happens because um the node information actually goes only to this chain it never reaches the xo in here so we have to do another kind of routing so if you want to use these play buttons um you have to do this one time and then maybe save it as a preset so you have to do it you know you have to don't do it every time uh if you don't need this then you don't need to do this <laughs> that's uh, that's the logic behind this uh so um to actually receive nodes from the XO here, we have to put some kind of node FX inside of these cells. So you can just use maybe a node transpose or um, a MIDI filter completely open, uh, whatever. But it needs to be some kind of node effect. Um, so here I'm using just a node transpose. Um, and then I rename this to kick. You can see your kick, name kick, right? And then you go to XO and use here a node receiver. Node receiver. And we receive from the drum machine cell kick, kick, right? And you can see only the kick drum here, the kick cell, because the kick cell is the only cell that has at the moment a node FX uh, device in there, right? So that's why. And then we have to disable here the mutes input mutes because we also want to receive notes from the um, from the note clip right so then we duplicate this and receive here oh wait a minute we have to put here a note transpose also here and call this snare and put this on here call it I had okay so now we can receive here the snare Duplicate this and receive here the hi-hat. Okay. So now you can trigger basically these cells with these, with these play buttons and everything works like the native drum machine. And you don't need to do this every time. You probably only have to set this up once for every cell uh, because XO here itself only uses eight pads, right? So you have to do this eight times here and then you save it as a preset, maybe in it preset. And then the next time you open it up and you only have to exchange the samples inside of XO and everything works like, like before. Um, then you can also um, close it the return channels and it looks like completely native device, um, except that it uses XO basically in the background, okay? So it's all the benefits from both worlds. There are no drawbacks, okay? So that's basically my solution for the problem of Simon. And maybe it helps you too. So if you like the video, then please like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, ask questions in the comments. I try to answer them all. And thanks for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye.